Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what we're going to go over is a really simple way of painting some scenery for a 40k board as quickly as possible. Now this is not going to be gorgeous, I promise you that, <laughs> but it'll look pretty good on the table. So I've got here one of the um, Sector Imperialis kits, I think this one is. I've used a couple of different bits for it and I would use this for most of the Imperial scenery that's out there. Uh, you can also do the Manufactorum in the same way that I've done the uh, Mechanicus kits uh, previously, but for just straight buildings, we're going to do it this way. Now you're going to need three things to get started, and that's a black spray, any old black, a brown spray. Now I'm going to use Mornfang brown for this, but you could use automotive paints, you know, something that you've just picked up from the bargain bin or what have you, just a brown, and then we're going to go over the top with a grey. And we're going to do a little bit more after that, you know, we're not going to just leave it sprayed, but for the basics of what we're going to do, it's down to those three sprays, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I've started off, first of all, giving it a black you know, base coat spray, made sure to get everything. Now what I'm going to do, if I just hold it like this, is I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to give it a spray. And I'm going to do that from... Uh, say about 30 centimeters away. This is really hard to show you <laughs> on, the, on the camera, but you want to come down at an angle, all right, so that you're leaving some of the black behind in the recesses. Now, this is not an exact science, and it's not going to be perfect either, but if there's a little bit of variation in how the building looks, that's not a big problem because, come on, you know, nothing is a perfect flat gray after it's been bombed into pieces and had you know a thousand years of dust sitting on top of it so you can you can do as you like here but I'm going to take this and I'm going to do that brown now now after a quick spray and just a couple of minutes of drying time this is what we've got now you can see that in some areas it's not a perfect brown you know I've deliberately been quite sloppy with it because I do want a slight sort of modulation of color as we go around the model now part of the reason why I'm doing this is so that I don't have to shade it uh, if I were to turn around and bust out Agrax Earthshade for every single piece of terrain on a board, uh, you're gonna you're gonna go broke. <laughs> okay, so if you can do this without breaking out the shades, all the better. You can see on the inside as well. I've not worried too much about getting the underside because you're never gonna see them. If you want to be fussy, you can flip it up and spray those as well. But I'm I'm not gonna bother. So what I'm gonna do now is exactly the same thing again, except this time I'm going to use uh, a different color. I'm going to use gray. It's up to you what you want to use. I'm going to use that gray now and let's see what we get. Now there we have it. After just three sprays, you know, we've got that color down. Now this is not the most, you know, it's not the most exciting color <laughs> completely by itself. And you'll see on the inside, I haven't actually sprayed that brown because I want the inner walls to be slightly different without having to muck around too much with them. The floors, we're going to do something else too. Now from here, what you can do, and what I'm going to do, is bust out, uh, let's say, some Tyrant Skull. Um, I would recommend against using a straight grey, because again, we want to give the impression that this has been in situ for a while. So, either... Let's say Tyrant Skull, or maybe use something like um, Underhive Ash, which is a, another good one, which is just a little bit off-white, has kind of a sickly green tone to it, which is quite cool. So we've got a little bit of kitchen towel, and I'm just going to get a raggedy old brush. Now the bigger the better with this. If you've got the biggest, cheapest, nastiest brush you can get your hands on, this is a really good one to use for this. I've wiped most of it off, same, you know, for all dry brushing, and I'm just going to start in little circles and you'll see it doesn't start up straight away you know I might need to put a little bit more on my brush or just build the color up slowly whatever works I do want to be a little bit quicker with it though so there we go we're starting to get somewhere now all you're doing is picking out the extreme edges of the detail and help adding just a bit more texture to this without having to resort to any shades so Round and round and round we go. Now this is a little bit time consuming, <laughs> funnily enough. And the bigger the piece of scenery, the more time you're going to need. So bigger brushes are better. I wish I had a bigger one. 
Let's come back and see what we've got when I'm finished with this though. All right, now there is our building with its dry brush. Now you can see I've been fairly quick about it. And honestly, once I got bored and started putting more on, <laughs> it looked better. So you'll find your own style that you like. Now I've done the outside fairly heavily with this, and then I've quickly dry brushed over the inside as well, just enough to bring up some of those interior details. Now here, what you could do, like if you wanted to paint these floor panels, uh, Rekarth Flesh or something works really well, just you know, actually paint them a solid color and then dry brush them with a white or something, okay? I, these, on my own table, I don't tend to paint them. Um, I'll leave them this slightly darker brown that hasn't been hit with the, the gray because I like the, the dusty, dirty, collapsed look. And if I go ahead and I paint this one with a bright, shiny floor, it's not going to fit in on my board. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But just a quick note on how you could do it for yourself. What I am going to do, though, is on the outside here, we've got two areas of detail on most of these uh, Imperial kits that really stand out. And that's these doors and these reliquary things. These are so cheerful. They are so Imperial it hurts. And I'll show you a real quick way of painting those. But what we'll do to start off with is we'll go for the door, and I've got here Sigmarite. Now after everything else we've done to the door so far, it's actually in a pretty good spot for us to just bust out some Sigmarite on a dry brush. And we'll start from the edges and work our way in just quickly, scrubbing on some of the Sigmarite. And you'll see it doesn't go on terribly well with the first pass, but after a couple of seconds you can come back hit it with a little bit more and you'll get this neat, just sort of modulated, sil uh, not silver, gold color. So what I'm gonna do is quickly go over the whole door with this stuff, get the angels in the corner too. And then what we'll do with everything else is to give it a bit of a quick wash. So you'll see what happens once we've done a little bit more to this. Now after just a couple of quick dry brushes with that Sigmarite, here's the bronzy color we've got. Now it's not perfect, but we're going to do just a fraction more to it to really set it off. And as you can see, I've done it to the uh, pointy bits on the top as well. If you haven't drawn blood with these, <laughs> you've not lived. These things are vicious. So do be careful. You know, joking aside, they will do a number on you if you're not watching out. So I've got here now my Zandri dust, and I'm just going to get this prepped on a really cheap, I want a flat brush for this because I want to be able to see where it's going at all times. And we're just gonna blast this straight out of the pot. As you can see, the flat edge here helps me control where it's going. You always wanna start from an edge and come in towards the center rather than painting out towards the edge of these uh, skull sections because you'll find if you do it that way, if you make a mistake, you hit it in, okay? So I'm gonna do this whole panel and then I'll do the other one as well and we'll come back and see what we've got. Now that those two areas are done we're going to move on to a couple of shades. Now I said we weren't going to use those but I mean the whole model shaded would be a disaster. Instead we're just going to do these little spot areas. I've got Seraphim Sepia for the skulls and Agrax Earth Shade for the uh, for the doors. Now as a quick note you can do as many of these areas as you like in brass or or what have you. In particular, these little vents look pretty good, I think, in Balthazar Gold. But this is looking at getting things on the table as quickly as possible. So we're going we're gonna to gloss over that. As well, I want it to fit my own table. But like I said, a quick note, you can go to town on these if you really want to spend the time on these, uh, on these panels. But what we'll do first of all, get my Seraphim Sepia, and you can use whatever old brush you got for this. Uh, if you've got a shade brush handy, you might as well, but I've still got my flat cheap thing out, so I'll just go ahead and jam some of this into my skull areas. Then we'll get some Agrax Earth Shade, and we'll do the same thing to the doors and the little bobbles on the top. Now with those washes dry, we see we've added a little bit more visual interest to the model without breaking up and adding too much to the palette adds just a little bit of warmth to it, which I think is important. What I'm going to do now is grab my Tyrant Skull out again, and we're just going to do a quick dry brush over those skulls. And this will take all of two seconds, guys. So just prep out your brush how you normally would, and 
easy as. Okay, all you're looking to do is highlight those edges and the horrible, <laughs> horrible grinning faces you'll find done. Okay, and I'll do that to the other one now. Then we'll do exactly the same thing again, just get out a little bit of Sigmarite and do the same thing on the door, just to brighten it up a little bit and make that gold shine. Now, if you wanted to do a really dark brassy door, you could use Necron Compound here instead. I would just be a little bit more sparing with how it goes on, okay? Now there are a couple of extra things you can do, which if you don't want to spend a lot of time on these floor panels, will still help them stand out a little bit. For that, I've got my Doombull Brown and just a raggedy old uh, medium base brush. And you can use any sort of color you like here. I like Doombull Brown because it's got a sort of reddish tone. And what I'm gonna do is just quickly, any exposed bits of uh, pipe work or what have you that's been exposed by damage just jam a little bit of this on there now it doesn't take much and then we'll flick just a little bit of riser rust and sort of stab it randomly onto the ends of these pipes and as easy as that we've got a little bit of color we've got this neat rusty effect on that exposed sort of iron stuff and it doesn't again add too much to the palette, that we're going to confuse things. And there we have it, we're done. You know, I could get some Necron compound and do in these little uh, metal bits. I could paint all of the skulls in. I could do these little filigree bits. It's up to you, you know, you can go mad. But as far as getting this done as fast as possible, <laughs> I don't think you can pass this up. Like I said, it's not the most stunning and you can get some really amazing effects with these kits. But watch what happens when we put a miniature on there. Now let's just raise that up a bit and suddenly with the power of context things look pretty cool. You know I think your models ought to be the star of the show. Here's an Orlock Ganger, we'll chuck him down and suddenly I think that framing really helps it work. All right you don't need these to be amazing just done and they'll make your model stand out all the more. So hopefully guys, something there was useful to you. As I said, this is really quick and easy and you can use whatever sort of variation of colors you want. The real trick is just in spraying on and getting that slight modulation of color so you don't have to worry about using a huge amount of shade over these models. As ever, feel free to drop a comment down there in the old box below if you've got any questions. I will try and answer them. <laughs> Been a little bit slack lately. Shh, don't tell anybody. And likewise down there is the Yell Coffee and Patreon pages linked as well. So as ever guys, thank you very much for your time. And we'll get that in there. You enjoy the rest of your day.